Hey everyone, hope you are doing very, very well on this Thursday morning. Uh, thought I would drop in to give this week's training and I'm going to be talking all about touchy subjects for many, the pension. Um, this training uh, might come with a trigger warning. In fact, it does come with a tr trigger warning uh, because every time I bring it up, um, some cops seem to get the backs up and I get it, it's fine. Um, but I'm going to share with you my thoughts uh, and what I stand for in relation to the pension. If you've listened to the podcast episode on my thoughts on the pension, you'll know uh, where my mindset is in relation to the pension. So there's nothing new there. Uh, but I'm going to share with you uh, some common mistakes that police officers make in relation to the pension uh, and a better way to round, uh, to get a better outcome and a better way to think in my opinion. Okay. Uh, and by the way, if you want the uh, Fund Your Freedom training that goes along with this what i'm talking about today just comment in the uh, comment section below underneath this video um uh fund uh in, in fact type in pension that's a quick word type in pension i'll send you the training for um for this training uh, and you can then go and watch that and implement the stuff that i talk about so um the pension uh few big mistakes that many people make or police officers make in regards to the pension okay the first one being is uh thinking that the pension's going to be enough we speak to hundreds of police officers every single month and in fact looking back when i was a do a lot of cops came back to the police um because their pension wasn't enough let me explain why number one throughout the years of you working in the job you get a bigger mortgage, you have kids, you, uh, you know, get a better car, you upgrade your lifestyle over the years, right? But one thing that doesn't upgrade with you is inflation uh, and pay rises, right? So by the time you retire in your 50s or 60s, you've built this nice lifestyle, nice house, car, etc. You've got comfortable with that. And then all of a sudden, when you actually get your pension num numbers, it's you start to realize, actually, it's not enough to support your lifestyle. So retirement is a very loose word, I believe, in the police, because a lot of people have to get another job, another income stream, whether that's business or a job. Uh, and many clients, uh, sorry, many members of the police that we found go back to the police, uh, which they just retired from. So... Um, the biggest mistake there is actually thinking the pension will be enough by the time you retire. I speak to many cops and I always ask the question, uh, hey, what's your, what's your retirement numbers? And they will say, I don't know. I have no idea. And the few that do check realize very quickly, actually, something's not right here. I'm going to have to need another income stream when I do retire. Okay. Now, going off this uh, training right now with you right now. I'm talking about this from a financial standpoint. I'm not talking about the other benefits that a pension has, such as if you die on duty, your family get paid, get that. I think it's a great benefit. I'm talking financially, which most people opt in the pension for, uh, basically to support them when they do retire. Uh, and of course, if they get injured and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm not talking about you know, if you're dying on duty or anything like that, this is purely financial. Um, so biggest mistake is thinking that the pension will be enough. Uh, please do your numbers. Um, please realize that when you grow older um, and you've built this nice lifestyle that all of a sudden you're either going to have to get on the other income stream or decrease your lifestyle. Okay, so just keep an eye on that. Number two is... Uh, staying in the job longer than you need to, right? So if you love the job and you are happy with what you're doing, you know what? Congratulations, that's success. Success is not, you know, just about money and, you know, building a business or anything like that. Uh, I believe it's all about happiness. And if you're truly happy in the job, good for you. This training right now is for those who are unhappy and they are miserable. And they know that a change is needed, but they're afraid of leaving the pension, okay? Now, I'm going to share my screen. And um, bear with me a second. Oh, 
sorry about that. Hopefully I'm still alive. I pressed the wrong button. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen and this is what most people do, right? So we, we go from, uh, zero to birth to all the way to around about 18 years old. Okay. And then from 18 years old, we'll start working to around 65, uh, let me just put this 65 here, 65 years old. And then what we'll do, hopefully we live much older. Let's put a hundred there. I know the life expectancy is a lot less, but let's put a hundred there. Right now, what starts to happen throughout the years, uh, makes up your, uh, career. So this section here is your career. Okay. Now that for some is around 40 ish years for a lot of people. Okay. This is your job or your career. And that is a large proportion of your life. Okay. It, it is the biggest proportion of your life, your working career. Right. But more importantly, that is the larger proportion of you living your life, being happy. And many, many cops I speak to live absolutely miserable from uh, whenever they join, or they might be happy when they join, but over the years, uh, they start to, you know, be miserable. They start to be unhappy. They are unsatisfied with their pay and the changes in the politics and all that. And by the way, uh, I'm not, you know, I think good for you for feeling that way if you're unhappy because that's your inner dialogue trying to tell you something needs to change, right? I completely understand why you are complaining. I completely understand why, um, you know, you might feel unhappy um, and I completely understand and have empathy with how you're feeling too, right? The job has changed. I hear it all the time. The horror stories that myself and my team here is is pretty bad, okay? So I get it. But looking back at this, you are wasting your life literally pissing it down the drain if you're staying in a job just for the pension. Because one day, guys, you are going to arrive at this point, okay? And this is uh, end of your life, okay? And life doesn't begin at 65. Life doesn't begin in your 50s. You're living it right now. And you have this one opportunity to make the most out of your life without being fearful of retirement, which I'm gonna share with you a strategy of how to do that, okay? So just one, one thing I want you to take from this is I want you to draw out, uh, let's go for 100 again, 100 squares, little squares, okay? So the way it would look like is, uh, go to this. So little squares, just like this, okay? And I want you to draw 100 out, so plus 100. And then I want you to fill, fill in, color in, like this, the number of squares in relation to your age. Okay, the number of squares in relation to your age. So you have a visual representation on number one, how many years you've, you, you've actually lived in relation to the 100 squares, but number two, um, how many squares are left? That realization will hopefully hit you between the eyes if you're unhappy in your jobs, okay? If that visual representation will make you realize, oh crap, I'm not many got squares left. And then you'll start to think actually what is important. The biggest regret people life uh, have in their life on their deathbed was uh, not making changes and not taking a chance to live a life they truly wanted to live, all right? That is the biggest risk that many, many people have on their deathbed. So take a lesson from that. So uh, I know it's a big one, uh, but number two, staying in the job longer than you need to if you're unhappy because you think the pension's all that and uh, you think that there may not be another better alternative, which I'll go on to. Third one, which I just touched on, is thinking there's there's not a lot better. Um, I have 
uh, been in the pension and when I was a DO, I opted out pretty much straight away. Uh, I've opted out of other pension uh, schemes that I've been in. And the reason for this is because uh, I don't want to live a life um, based off the people who are telling me to be a pe to get a pension. So I was speaking to a cop the other day. Uh, I said, hey, out of curiosity, what made you opt in for the pension? And he says, oh, because everyone else was doing it. And when you follow the crowd, you can go no further than the crowd. So a lesson for this is to observe the masses and do the opposite. Now, if I want to live a particular lifestyle, I'm going to find someone who's got that lifestyle and copy and replicate, right? Because it makes sense. If I want to learn how to drive a car, I'm going to learn from a driving instructor. If I'm going to, uh, you know, pack on muscle and get six pack abs, I'm going to learn from someone who's got that. If I'm going to be uh, or want to get into the police, I'm probably going to take advice from a cop, okay? So when it comes to financial independence or freedom, what makes it right to take off people, uh, take advice off people who have not got that result? So when I spoke to this cop, he said, the reason I opted in was because everyone else was doing it. But everyone else hasn't got the result that he really wanted, which was being secure in retirement. Times have changed. We're in a different era right now. Back in the day, the pension uh, might have been great and people could retire. But we have moved on, all right? So please take advice from people who have got the result you want. Uh, there's plenty of options that will be better for you if you're unhappy and you're staying in the job just for the pension, okay? So and what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen in a second. Let me just get this up. And I'm going to walk through uh, some examples real quick. And if you are still with me, because um, I'm using some software at the minute, uh, if you could just do a comment uh, or, in fact, just give me a like, just see that you are actually paying attention. And if you're watching back on replay, you can type in replay. So let me just uh, get this up and we will crack on. So um, share my screen. Cool. So hopefully you can see my screen. Now, uh, what myself and actually a lot of our clients do now is they invest in index funds, okay? And um, with an index fund, what I like about them is that they're really diversified. They are, uh, you can get your, you can become very liquid uh, uh, very soon. So if you try and ring the pension office, you can't get that back within uh, until retirement. But if you want to liquidate your investments, you can typically do that in five business days. Um, so there's loads of different, you know, options you can do. Uh, and also, um, you can increase or decrease the amount of contributions you want to make. But let's say you start off with zero. And let's say, you know, we're going to get a 8% return with inflation adjusted. And let's say you're going to do this for 35 years because you're opting out the pension. And we're just using an example now of you starting right at the beginning of your career. And on average, you're going to put £450 into your uh, investments every single month for 35 years. So again, this example is if you are opting out as a fresh-faced cop, you're saying, hey, you know what? I'm not going to follow the crowd. I'm going to actually take control of my own financial future. And you do this instead. You'd end up securing just over a million with 8.3% return, okay? And that's inflation adjusted because on average, we typically have around 2 point, uh, 2 point something percent inflation. How this works basically and why you might be thinking, geez, Alex, why is that so much? Well, number one, uh, you invest 5,400 in the first year, means you get 202 in interest. Uh, the second year, you invest exactly the same but all of a sudden, you've got more than double the interest, 667. The reason for this is because now you've got 10,800 in the total pot and you've earned interest on the year before. So this is an example of compound interest. And what starts to happen over the years, you start earning the interest on the interest and this starts to snowball, okay? So we can see throughout the years, it really starts to take off. And you can see here in complete passiveness, You've achieved 800 and, uh, sorry, 843,000 completely passive total interest and 189,000 you've only put in. Your graph will look something like this, which is a nice graph. Your green represents your total deposits 
and your orange is the total investment you required, okay, your interest. Um, now, I've never seen a police pension like that at all uh, uh, at, from all the conversations I've had. And that will be a figure where you can withdraw from your investments that will actually uh, give you a kind of an, a, a better a chance of uh, retiring without working forever and ever. But, you know, if you're watching this, we can't go back in time. You're probably not a fresh, fresh face cop. You've been in the job many, many years. So we're going to use a different example. We're going to say that, you know, you've got 20 years in the job until you can retire. We're going to use that 8%. But all of a sudden, you're now going into business and you can earn what you like. And let's say you start putting, I don't know, 1,500 in there because uh, you can you can use your contributions to um, uh, basically uh, invest, use your business contributions. All of a sudden, you've actually got 883,000, but don't forget that your pension has been deferred. So your pension's still there because you've invested in the pension for 10 years in this example. And all of a sudden, you've still got this of your own personal uh, personal um, investments. Okay, so hopefully that is making uh, sense. Let me just go back to this. Now, also, um, I want to touch on, because I get this question a lot, um, how would you go around uh, using your pension contributions to fund your business? And again, if you're still watching with me right now, you can opt in. Uh, or just comment below, in fact, pension or uh, comment below pension. I'll send you the link for the training that I did the other day called Fund Your Freedom. But in short, um, what many of our clients have done, and I think it's very smart, if they're unhappy, is they've come out of their pension for one year, use their £450 or so to actually fund a business, to gain their freedom because they know they don't want to stay in X number of years being happy in the job, right? So they've used their contributions, they've stopped the pension, they've used that for their own business to gain their freedom. Then when they've gained the freedom with a successful business, they started uh, funding investments and so forth, right? Now, you may think if you do the numbers and speak to the pension office, by coming out the pension for one year, it will make this huge difference. It actually doesn't. And also you get re-opted in, uh, which is quite annoying for some, but you get re-opted in anyway, and you can do that anytime um, if you are unsure. But one year coming out of pension to give yourself a chance of gaining a life you want to live with happiness, I think is a good bet. All right? I think that's a good bet in my opinion, because I don't believe anyone should sacrifice their happiness for a wage or a pension. All right? That's just me. Uh, and people say, yeah, but Alex isn't business risky. You've got one life, and uh, I find people who say that uh, pay for a mortgage they leave. They pay for a mortgage for a home they leave empty all day. They uh, don't see their kids enough. Uh, they uh, may bring some of that stress home uh, due to the job. They have anxiety in relation to the job. They have mental health issues to the job. For me, I look at people who are unhappy in their jobs and think, Jesus, that's the biggest risk. Right, that is way. I couldn't do that. I just couldn't do that. That is the biggest risk. So a lot of people look at me or, or business so business owners and think, Jesus, that's a risk. But actually, I I want to flip it and say, hats off to you, Steve, or Barbara, or Doris. You are miserable. You're paying for a house you leave empty all day. You are risking the fact of you knowing the pension not going to be enough. Hats off to you because I couldn't do that. Okay. So that's what many of our clients do. They stop the contributions for one year, use that money to fund their business, give themselves a chance. And then, of course, uh, when they do the numbers, you actually make a slight difference on the actual pension value at the end anyway. I also, before I get some one piping up saying, yeah, but Alex, what about tax? Uh, I'm going to mention this. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a CPA. Uh, I'm not a tax specialist, but I know a thing or two about business and I know a thing or two about tax because you have to, right? Um, when I invest, I invest in a stocks and share ISA. I have a £20,000 allowance, okay? That means I can fund that every single year, £20,000. Everything over or everything that I achieve in interest in that account is tax-free. 
Yeah. So everything I put in through that stocks and share ISA, when I want to withdraw from it in the future, is tax free. That's number one. But also I invest through my companies, something called a SIP, a self-invested personal pension. What that means is that I will invest direct from my companies into a SIP, which means I reduce my corporation tax. But also when I do become an old man and get gray hair, uh, I'm not sure about the beard. I can't grow a beard, unfortunately. Um, uh, but that will mean that total value, I will be able to withdraw 25% tax free from my SIP. Okay. From my SIP. And, uh, that is a, you know, much bigger than a police lump sum. Uh, and also I can withdraw from that SIP, which will be taxed at a regular, regular rate. So for me, I invest in both. I invest in my stocks and share ISA and my SIP because I want the lump sum, but also I want the tax free stuff from my ISA because I will get some cop now and then say, Alex, yeah, but if I stop my pension contributions, that means uh, I'm going to get taxed more in my pay in my pay. That's right. You will. But the difference is minor compared to what you can achieve in investments. And don't forget, you're not sacrificing the one life you have by being miserable in it. Okay. So guys, hopefully that makes sense. It was a long winded training. This one, I was trying to put as much in this as possible. Um, you, uh, really need to do your pension numbers in making sure you know what you're going to be forecasted to get. Um, I know things can change due to the government and stuff like that. So please do just check it as it stands. You won't be able to have control over it if things change in the future because of the government. Number two, uh, you don't need to stay in it longer than you have to if you're unhappy. If you're just staying it because of the pension, you do not have to do that, okay? There are better alternatives. And what I found through our own members who have done this, and there's been several who have done this, um, they felt like when they came out of the pension, there was no, there was no like psychological like, like chain on them. They felt like actually there was no it was a cutoff and they were, they felt emotionally, uh, tied free, which I thought was, which is awesome. Uh, and number three, uh, biggest mistake thinking there's not better. As we know, we know there's better, um, which I've just explained. So guys, hopefully this makes sense. If you've got value from this, give me a like, give me a comment. If you do want the free training that goes with this type in pension, I'll send you the link for that. And, um, you can watch that and, uh, hopefully get more from it as well. So guys, I'll leave you with that. This is Thursday's training on pension. I'll be seeing you soon and uh, have a great day ahead. Cheers. Bye-bye.